Morning, everybody. Uh, I thought I'd do this video today. So I don't have enough money to run around and do things. Although we are going out looking for a date for our wedding. We have to go around to the different mayors and find a date that we want. We want the 19th of June. Our birthdays kind of form a yin-yang symbol. Hers is the uh, 26th and mine is the 12th of June. And we're trying to get, I'm, tr I'm trying, she's not that concerned about it, but I'd like to get the uh, 19th of June so it forms more perfect a yin-yang symbol. That frankly, uh, when we were first started talking, I was 12 hours away in America, so I was already referring to a symbol that she's never even seen before. Uh, but anyway, we're, that's, we're going to run around today, but we can't get in and out today because they're building the road. As you can see, there's like a six inch tall hunk of concrete. The only way to get out, I have to drive up here out into the field and it's actually my trike sitting out there. I parked it there last yesterday and I drive all the way around down and past the barriers because they're going to pour this piece today. Uh, at least they said they would. <laughs> they take a while to get things done here. This is basic road building in the Philippines, all done pretty much by hand. They lay these uh, pieces of metal down. They use these pieces of reed bar to jam in the ground to support them. They put, I don't know if they put wire in here or reed bar in here. I think they might have, I don't know. Uh, this is not a heavily used road. Heavily used roads, they de yeah, definitely have the reed bar in there. Uh, it's all concrete, and it's kind of unusual how they do it. Uh, you can see the little lines. If you're a concrete guy, you're going, my goodness, why did they do that? I don't know. Uh, I assume it's possibly because of uh, retraction, or because later they may pave it and they need it to adhere better. But what they actually use, and I don't know if it's sitting here, is uh, what looks like a grass rake, but it's not a grass rake. It's only got a few tongues, but they're generally using stuff like this. And a longer, they have a longer hand screed. They screed it out, and then once it's screeded, they drag the uh, rake across, put these little lines in. Uh, I was actually out here at like 3 o'clock in the morning one night. They were out here working and trying to fix where a dog had run across using nothing more than their cell phone flashlights going along trying to fix things. Uh, the nice enough guy that's running the crew here, but he doesn't speak much of any English. He does seem to understand me, but beyond that, doesn't seem to. And here they're, they're, they're continuing this road up. I don't know if they're only going to here, but I do know he said he was going to pour this, this piece along the side. I don't know if it's coming up this far, but for the entrance in the apartments, uh, I need to pour it. And I just didn't want to get boxed in here today because we got to go places. But, uh basic road building in the Philippines and uh, they don't do much well they do have the, the road closed off at the moment but for a while they had it closed off even though when they didn't need to and people just opened it back up again and they didn't seem to care and when I came through to one day he opened it up for me uh, one of my neighbors has his car parked out here on the street for like a week and uh, He's an ignorant shit. He's got to park right in front of somebody's gate. But he's that sort of, I don't know if you ever know anybody from the area called Kensington in Philadelphia. Yeah, he's sort of that way. But he's not from Kensington. He's from Watertown, New York, which seemed to be just as ignorant. That sort of my rules kind of guy. Does what he wants. He's been driving me nuts for the landlord. Used to work for the water department in New York or in uh, Watertown, New York. And uh, in particular case, he probably will never find love here because he thinks all the women out here are totally interested in nothing more than your money. And he's an ignorant son of a bitch. At any rate, he is what he is. You can't pick your neighbors. That's unfortunate here. But um, that's what it is. But let's check it out. This is where they set up uh, their, their equipment for this job. And they've been living out here. Here's so you can see that couple people heading to school or whatever. Now this is the guy, I think, yep, this is the guy here that's running the show. This is their water tank, which they, they don't have much water here, so it dribble fills all the time. Morning. Morning. I'm showing people how you, how you got to live out here to build this. 
I mean, they've literally built themselves a little temporary house. They've got all their stuff here. They they bring in a truck, a small cement truck. It's not very big. It's like the size of a normal American dually, small dually truck, not big truck, like a pickup size dually, and uh, mix it up a batch at a time. They've got a little Bobcat, or it's a wheeled, I don't know if it's Bobcat brand or whatever. But see, they've got it all there. they got the sand, they got stone, and... Uh, not sure if this is a mixture already, but they backed the truck up in here, and I've seen them filling it up with, I guess, water and mortar mix. And he's putting away his hoses. I guess he needs for things. I don't know. It's hard. It kind of sucks not being able to talk to him. Um, and if they got a concrete cutter, but they literally, literally are living out here. I guess here's my trike off the road, parked out of the sun. We're gonna have to use that one today because if the other one would have been, um, the other one the roof's coming off of it. I got I put it back on, but I put it on backwards so the hole was at the back, and um, it had too much stuff sitting in it to park it out there. Things would wander off maybe. Although the one guy I've run into here, he's been here 27 years, and um, he says he's never lost anything. And his shop, he's got a repair shop that's not locked. There's not a lock on it. It's wide open. You can walk right in there anytime, 24 hours a day. And he's never lost anything. He drives around in his truck with stuff in the back of the truck. He's never had a thing get stolen. 27 years. So it's a lot nicer, a lot uh, safer place in general than most people think. You're in the third world, but it, don't get freaked out by uh, things. Man, oops, I did it the wrong way. There's some pretty nice houses right here. This is a really nice, this is, I think he's a Filipino guy. And there's another one further down. That's actually got the seat extended another foot and a half off the back of the bike to allow that to happen. And I've seen that many people on without, uh, without that extension bar they mount on the back. They weld up a frame to actually extend the seat. Uh, and there's, they tell me, he's like you said, he, he, he's just an ignorant shit, he literally parks right in front of their gate, I just watched a, uh, a, a delivery guy come and have to walk around the damn car, and there's plenty of room here for him to park where he's not blocking the gate, my area is blocking the gate, oh man, this is a pretty nice place here, I believe this Philippine family that owns this. You can see they built some nice houses here, even for the Filipinos. And you can rent a house here like that in this area, probably in the neighborhood of like 500. If you go to other places, like we were up in Biest the other day, and uh, oh, the sun's blocked. Uh, up in Bias City, up there, I've been told I can rent something for under 200 like that, or around 200, with a yard fenced in, nice. And um, after seeing the bias market, I'm tempted to maybe go up there next year once my lease is up. The landlord here is a bit of a pain in the ass. Mostly because the idiot from Watertown keeps lying about me to her. Uh, we had an issue with a generator. The issue got solved. I had to park the generator out in the parking lot because fumes were getting in when I had it behind the house where they told me to put it. And... Uh, didn't realize the shifting winds here was forcing the fumes against the building. And apparently there is a seven, possibly a seven meter rule for how far the generator needs to be from uh, from the building. Which, where I set it up that particular day, was totally legitimate and where I'm going to set it up tomorrow. But he had to make a big stink and call the barangay and make out like it was a problem, which it legally wasn't. I did nothing wrong. But he did that when he knew the power had actually come back on and didn't tell me. He made sure he called the barangay first instead of telling me the power was on because he wanted to create a stink. And he wanted to get the, the, uh, the owner upset with uh, having the barangay come, but that doesn't make them very happy. I'll show you my place here. I don't want to show you the name of the place. I, I don't want. You know, one of the things I noticed with Paul's videos, he talked about people showing up to knock on the door that when he wasn't there and didn't like it. 
uh, he was thinking of moving because of that. And he's got a nice place, and it's not hard to find at all. Uh, his videos, he basically, in a sense, showed you where he's at by talking about other things around him. But um, he's leaning towards moving because of it. Now, we don't plan to stay here probably more than until February next year. Anyway, so, because the landlord and, uh, and this idiot next door. And the idiot next door is your typical ignorant American. And you trust me, you don't want to be the ignorant American here. Um, hmm. Anyhow, I'll show you this. I'm just going to show you the front of the house. We're a little messy in there. We don't have proper furniture at this point. We got boxes all over the place and folding plastic tables and chairs and my recliner. I think in another video you see how messy it is in there. Boxes everywhere. There's my other trike. Back when we moved in, you couldn't even get up on here. They had one little spot, like, right here, where a bike could get up. And this, over here, was a six-inch cliff. And I asked the landlord to put some dirt there, so I could get up on here with the trike. And they put in such a steep jump, I had to slam into it to get up, like, six inches out and then down on an angle. I put all that dirt there. I, Basically, did it myself by hand. But this is the front of the place. This guy, he's a nice guy. He's from Canada. And this is the ass all over here. His girlfriends constantly keep bailing on him because he's such an ignorant shit. They hang around for a week or so and then run away. And they're going to be building a pool back here, but it's not built yet. The whole place got built when the landlord was in Belgium. And she's still in Belgium doing something. I don't know what work she does. Else she could be a maid and actually be able to build this. And um, they're building a pool. They've already got a shower house. This is a little shack that uh, guy, her relative uh, uh, lives in when he's here for the weekend a lot of times. And you'll see right there, that is a little building they put together for me to put a generator in. Even though when the first time the wrong guy came here and we all just went out with the landlord, uh, the maintenance guy and everything and discussed where we could put the thing that it wouldn't bother somebody, it was over here. Now, I had enough extension cord, not big enough, to make it to there, but then he stuck it back there. Each one of these little gaps, each one of these posts here, this is at least eight feet, so you can see it added up in your head. It's, uh, quite a bit of wire to get back there and uh, like I said he made a big stink the last time even though I stuck that generator out here I even had telltales hanging off it to uh, show me which way the wind was blowing in fact there's even a piece of half burnt paper out here that I laid on the ground and lit on fire to watch where the smoke went but I brought the wire from the back of the house where they told me to plug it in brought the wire up and over and out through the upstairs here and out to here in the middle of the parking lot. And it was sitting right here, which from the building over is seven meters. When he said the seven meter roll right in front of me, I'm a welder, I kind of know measurements a little bit just by looking within the inch or a few inches or six inches or so. So I walked over to the building, put my back against the wall and took seven paces and I came up short of the generator. And a, pay, a one pace is probably actually less than a meter, but uh, it's closer to a yard, but either way, I was still short of it. And the only way I could have gone in a little further, I would have been blocking somebody driving in, which I couldn't do. But I could feel the wind blowing on my back right now. That particular day, it was blowing that way, away from his apartment. Yet, when they show up, what's he bitching about? Fumes, the fumes, the fumes. He wasn't bitching about the fumes. He didn't like the noise. He's got enough money he's talking about having solar shit put on this place. I ain't got money for solar. I would have liked to have done solar, but I don't own this place, so I'm not about to invest in solar. I actually thought about building a trike with a, like a solar, basically a trike with the solar panels on it, the battery rigs in it, so it basically is a, a drivable generator, or at least a trailer, make a trailer rig that's a, uh, a generator house made out of solar, so I can move it to a new location. But until you buy here, 
you you are going to be moving a few times probably we've i've moved three times at least since i got here from the hotel to hermagina hermagina here and we're looking to move from here we just saw a place in dumaguete the other day they said all solar pow powered by uh, rent to own and we're going to look at that probably possibly today if we end up in dumaguete uh running around to get this date for the marriage going and getting married in dumaguete is a little more complicated um some paperwork involved this a little more than going to valencia or bacong or biased uh, we were in bias the other day we didn't have time for that and we didn't have our paperwork which is just bias is a run now, if you look the uh, road trip is 35 miles north from bacong to dumaguete through dumaguete up to bacong uh, luckily you can use a diversion road it saves you quite a bit of time uh, it only takes about 20 minutes to get to the north end, 20, 25 minutes to get to the north end of the diversion road from here, or from all the way down in Dowlin, where it actually starts. And I already did, there's a video, I'll connect them together. They're, they're all like part one, part two. I'm making um, playlists out of these videos. They only let me run eight minutes. So it'll be set up in a playlist. You start on the first one, it'll just play through. Uh, as far as the picture quality, sometimes the picture quality goes off. I think it's mostly the internet, not the camera, because I'm getting good visibility on it. It looks good when I'm watching it, uh, but once it's downloaded, sometimes even when I'm watching it, it's pretty crappy. And I've got the best internet you can get here, but it's still not, it's still the Philippines. <laughs> you ain't getting fiber optic here. Maybe if you get Elon Musk's shit, it might be, but that's actually a little bit more expensive than the, the, uh, current internet I have which comes with TV for about 50 bucks a month or Elon stuff it's more like 60 uh, and I think it's a just internet I don't know if he has a TV connect I get Cinemax and HBO along with uh, some like American news I get Fox News the Republican propaganda channel and I get uh, CNN probably the Democratic propaganda channel but I don't, it'll seem like they're as bad as Fox Fox is a bit ridiculous. And a few other news medias that you can get through it. Otherwise, I get my media from, or my news from uh, YouTube, from clips from other sources. Don't look like it's being a fun place in America right now with all the shootings. They need to get a handle on that. Now, I'm an avid gunman. I, I've been shooting guns since I was five. But they need to put some limits on these assault weapons. And I had, I had that kind of weaponry when I was in the United States. I enjoyed them. I had a lot of fun with them. I like a rapid fire shooting, but uh, I need to get a handle on this. And I think it's more about hardening the schools than trying to get rid of the guns because there's too many. And there's too many that are going to fight back against them getting rid of the guns. And frankly, I have ancestry that goes all the way back to the Declaration of Independence. My sixth great grandfather is a statue at Independence Hall. He's the signer. And one of the 50-some signers that signed the declaration, they picked him out of all of them to be to represent the signers as a statue next to Independence Hall. And, and the one that's in the Nicolas Cage movie where they hide behind the feet of a statue, uh, his name is George Clymer. But my ancestry in the United States goes all the way back to the, to the uh, Quakers that Penn brought over. And I'm not a Quaker. Um, not particularly religious at all, actually. Uh, at any rate, uh, that's our play. That's the thing. That's uh, building roads in the Philippines and a little bit of chat. Um, have a good morning, guys. Have a good day.